You said six. I don't know. Wait, wait, what? All righty, Ty Pinky, thank you so much for joining me on 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you for having me. You know, just five minutes ago, you sent me on WhatsApp pictures of us from 11 years ago in my bar mitzvah. I still remember that day. I'll never forget it. The day that you came to my house so that we can discuss the bar mitzvah plan. And half an hour through, you had my watch on your wrist. And I'll never forget that moment that my mind is just out of this world. I think you traumatized me, really. I think that's what happened. If you're being traumatized, then you invite people to your you know, podcast. That's weird. <laughs> definitely, definitely. No, but seriously, I think magic is just so incredibly powerful. That sensation that it gives people and the impact that it leaves on people. Talk to me a little bit about what you do. You're this, one of the most incredible magicians in Israel. Talk to me about that. Uh, thank you, first of all. I think you, you said it by yourself. I think magic is the only art form that creates a unique sensation. I think, like, for instance, when you see a juggler juggling ten knives or an acrobat doing crazy stuff with I don't know what, you say, oh my God, that's amazing. You applaud, you respect them for their practice and for their art. When you see a magic, a good magic trick or magic show, you ask how. And this is the only art form that creates this kind of question, saying, how does he do it? Like, it, you know, it <laughs> makes this yeah. in your brain. And this is, what, this is what, why magic is happening and still happening for years. And because human being, beings love to being, you know, intrigued and say, yes. how? Because, you know, you, we're intelligent people. We know how things work. When you, you become an adult, you understand life. And then comes someone and like this makes your watch disappear. Like you say, oh my God, I'm intelligent. How do you do it without me noticing? Right. So Itai, talk, walk me a little back. Walk me a little bit back in your life because I have to know how do you even get started as a magician? How do you discover this innate passion of yours to amaze and intrigue people? Um... I think, I don't know who said it, one of the greatest painters in the world, he said, a, a painter is a kid that just continued with his doodling, you know, every kid does this when he's a kid, and then you become a, a painter, a famous painter, where, an artist, you know, when you become an adult. Right. Not all of us, like, you know, a lot of people can pay, play the piano, not everyone becomes a Beethoven. So, magic is the same, I think most of the kids, I think mainly boys get like a magic kit or a magic book or something like this and they play with it like for 10 minutes or a week and then they stop. I, I know you're more than that because you love magic, but most of the kids are like, you know, doing it for a week or a few days and then they continue playing basketball or whatever. There are other hobbies. Right. And I think the magician is just a kid that continued. He just loved it and did more and more from this because... Like every time I did a magic trick for someone, when I beca I began magic when I was 15-ish and left it and continued with my sports. And on the age of like 19, give and take, I, I came back to this, like my passion, my, my kids as, as a kid, my passion when I was a kid. And every person I showed him a magic trick told me, okay, can you have your business card? And I was like, business card. This is a hobby, man. I'm just doing this to heal and people told me, but you, this is like whatever. And when you hear it once, you say, okay, that's a great compliment. When you hear it like 15 times a day, you say, I think I should make a living out of this. So, so that was at 19 years old when you decided to, to go from a hobby to actually becoming a full-time magician as a profession? Yeah. I think when I was like 20, I already like, you know, got booked for serious events. Incredible. Know, for mitzvahs and stuff, not huge conferences, but it wow. was like 
I got paid already for my gigs. Right. So now, Itai, you're, you're a little bit different in the field in the sense that you're not just going and doing street magic and bar mitzvahs and weddings and so on, but you, you do huge conferences and you're doing a show and you call it stand-up magic. And I, I'd love for you to tell me a little bit about this combination of stand-up and magic and how do these two intertwine with each other? Yeah, so first of all, the combination is, as you said, stand-up magic, you can understand by the name. It combines stand-up comedy and magic. Um, the combination, I think, is natural, because most of the magicians use comedy, or mm -hmm. try to be funny, at least. I don't know whether they're all funny, but they try. They use gags and comedy bits. And stand-up comedy is being funny so that the art form is very similar you know the crowd the target audience is the same you know stand up comedy and magic it's entertainment it's not, sure. it's not like combining ballet dancing with stand up comedy or you know oprah with magic but it still like, forces you to be creative enough to 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 create a show that's that has both the elements of jokes and and entertain and entertainment yeah. on the side of comic but also the magic the magician's wow factor yeah, actually, it's much more than just comedy and, and, and jokes. It's literally, I needed to begin a new art from the beginning, being a stand-up comedian. For the crowd, it's okay, it's like the same. He's very funny. He uses very good jokes. It's not like, you know, a joke or two. In my show, I have like a set of 10 minutes with a mic, just a set of comedy, back, like rock, we call it, just a comedy set in the middle of the magic tricks. So it, it was literally, you know, like... Incredible. Myself a new art from from the beginning. Wow. And so it was difficult for me. For the crowd, it's like it's very funny. They don't know the difference. I think. Like actually, a week ago, I spoke with someone that saw my show, and she told me I love the act. And you know what? Your magic tricks they were good also. Say, like, they're amazing. I've been doing this for fifteen years. Of course, they were good. <laughs> but she she perceived my show as a stand-up comedian using magic tricks. And I think that the main actually issue with my show is whether one comes to see the act when he thinks it's a magic show or a stand-up comedy show. Because if he thinks it's a magic show, it will be damn funny. And if he thinks it's just a stand-up comedy, it will be very surprising. I love That's it. The thing. I love it. Now, Itai, you're not just a magician, you're also actually an entrepreneur, and I had the pleasure of coming to one of your Sorcerer's Sundays in Tel Aviv, yeah. uh, which was one of the most incredible uh, night out experiences I've had. Uh, tell me a little bit about this project, and, and you actually do it with a lot of your magician friends, where you just amaze people every Sunday at a restaurant. Yeah, actually, it's a weekly show, the longest weekly show in Israel, like wow. we've been running for six and a half years. Uh, prior to the COVID-19, of course. Right. And, and actually, yeah, the format is a dinner show, and the idea was founded about the principle of there isn't a dinner show in Israel, and there isn't a good entertainment in English in Israel. Like, if you have friends or family from abroad, people come to Israel, and they can take them to the cinema or to, you know, to a restaurant, and it's not entertainment in English. And I right. think every city in the world, it's the same. When I was in Argentina, I went to see a, a tango dinner show or in Spain, Flamingo, or the opposite. <laughs> Flamingo, it's in Spain, I think, yeah. So every city, a big city, tourist city, there's a dinner show, show entertainment, whatever. Right. And it's almost always in the language of the city, of the country. Sure. And Israel is the same. When you come to Israel, there isn't something, anything in English. So yeah. We... This is how we, we began thinking about this. We said, okay, we're going to do a dinner show in English, entertainment for English speakers with magic, because magic is cool and everyone loves magic. It's for adults, of course. Yeah. And the cool part is that every show, every week, the show differs. Like, right. It changes. Yeah, we have like, you know, 10, 15 magicians all speaking English fluent. And like, for instance, we have four magicians this day and someone comes back after three months with his sister that came from South Africa or whatever, they see a new act because there are four new magicians. Right. So people see the show over and over again. We have people coming like 10 times and <laughs> like 12 times. Wow. That's cool. No, and it's, and it's not just that the show on stage is different, but it's also the interaction with the people. I mean, the magicians go around the tables and they come up to you and you really get that whole, that whole vibe, which is just... Just, yeah. The whole experience is incredible. So, Itai, I have to ask, 
Uh, we're doing this over Zoom now. Ideally, we would be face to face in Israel, but with COVID, uh, you're still doing shows and you're still entertaining people and you're still doing conferences. Tell, how do you do that during COVID times? How do you do magic over a computer screen? So in the beginning, it was like, okay, we'll just wait for this to pass yeah. and we'll go back to our lives. And then we were like, okay, it takes more time than we expected. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I think, all of the world thinks like me. And like, okay, it's a thing. <laughs> so actually, I thought about, you know, Zoom. I said, okay, I'm going to do sh shows on Zoom. It's very different because, you know, I don't have the crowd. There, you know, the interaction and bringing people on stage and hearing the laughs. And then I said to myself, myself, it's not the same thing. So don't, don't, don't force think it. Think about it as, yeah, you can't, you know, wait for the crowd to applaud and say, okay, you can't, you know, um, just do your show and expect it to be the same on Zoom. No, it's not the same and it will not be the same. You need to adapt yourself and adapt the show go for Zoom. Like last night I did a show and like I want to do some jokes. Okay, so I did my bits and I put everyone on silent because I need I need them to hear me instead of them hearing, you know, people in the house or whatever. Right, right. So I can't hear the laughs. I can see them laughing, but it it's silent. It's like a bad comedy club. Silent. <laughs> you can hear all the crickets from, from outside. Like I do a gag and that was my mother. And then I hear... Wow. <laughs> And I can see them laughing, so they're having fun and they enjoyed it. But it's difficult. It, it's different. That's what it is. Can you get it? Can you get uh, the the magic cross? That astonishment. You know, sometimes people, when you flip a bottle and you show that it's empty now, people want to go and see it and they want to put their hand under it to see that it's real in the air. Now they can't do that, right? Because now it's all virtual. Um, yes, they can't physically wise, but I think actually it's a philosophical discussion because I think the magician, the, the, the people, the skeptic, they say, yeah, you know, I, I hate magic. I want to figure out the tricks. The only thing I want is to figure out the tricks. I think this person isn't problematic. I think the problem is with the magician performing. I think that if the magician, like magic, when you think about it, it's very, very condescending. Like I think Seinfeld said it the best. Seinfeld said, a magic show goes like this. Here's a coin. Now it's gone. You're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly like most magicians do. They make you feel stupid. And I think it's a problem. I think when you're condescending and you're being, you know, um, how do you say it? Um, patronizing yeah. you know, on, on your, your audience's expense. Yeah. It's a problem. They feel stupid. When they feel stupid, they want to figure out the tricks. I can see all the time. I, I see my, my colleagues going on TV and their first phrase is, okay, today I, I brought something that will blow your mind. I'm going to fool you today. Why? I think magic isn't the competition like me against you. If you figure out the trick, you won. If I fold you, I win. Right. This is not the game. This is not, you know, like basketball, a winner and a loser. I think we're both on the same side. We're having fun. I'm here to entertain you and you I love to it. have fun. Let's do it together. I love it. And I think the crowd feels it. When when they get this feel, this vibe, they don't want to figure out the tricks. Like in the beginning of my show, I do a comedy bit just, just about this, about, you know, the people trying to figure out the tricks and whatever. And... The subtext is don't, not because I won't fool you, I will fool you. This is not the idea. This is not my mission. I love it. No, and, and I mean, you're so approachable on stage and your show is mainly for adults, right? From my, what I remember correctly with, with some of the jokes, but, but really, I mean, I, I've seen quite a few magic shows because I'm a huge magic fan myself and, and yours, your show is one of the most, the one, one of the most that I enjoyed the most because you're so approachable and because you just make it such a unique experience as a friend and it's not as I'm up here, you're down in the audience, now just get ready to be fooled and good luck figuring it out. Yeah. Uh, Itai, I have to ask, we're here, over the, we're here over Zoom, can you show me something and give me the experience of what it's like to, to be in a magic show in COVID-19 times? 
I, I can try, I can try. Let, let, let's do this. Um, can you see the clip? Yes, I can. All right. Let's put it here. I'm good. I want you to think of... <laughs> magically place it on the floor. <laughs> Nailed it! No, not yet. Wait a second, let's do this. You know what? I'll do this and this. Opa. All right. Nailed it. <laughs> so I want you to think of any three-digit number. Okay, got it. No, no three, don't go with three, 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 because that's very obvious. Ah, shoot. Okay. Now, okay, I have a new one. You do? Yeah. You can say it. What is it? Six, eight, nine. 459, yes? So I, I'll go with six in the beginning, six at nine. I have hearing problems, so let's go with my number, okay? <laughs> so, okay, sounds good. <laughs> I'll do it as fair as possible. You said six. I don't know. Yeah. Wait, wait, what? That's a note drop, like a mic drop. Itai, what? What the f? What the hell was Magic. that? No way. Okay, I did not Photoshop now, this. Now, now your viewers will think, yeah, they planned this. I it's swear, like, like, okay. he's playing along. This is okay. You know, this was maybe one of the simplest but most impressive things I've ever seen. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I can continue to do this interview right now. I'm a little bit shook. <laughs> and I was thinking of 289 in the beginning and I was like, you know, no, I'll change it to 689. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, that was just crazy. Okay, let's just move on and then I'll go. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to sleep tonight. This is just crazy. Itai, um, humanity is changing. Things are becoming more technological. People are becoming impatient. People's standards are rising because of technology, all the immediate gratification what is happening to the magic industry and you know because it seems that magic today is is still pretty similar to what it was when houdini was alive uh, but now things are things are becoming more technological i don't know anything so maybe you can correct me and um, where are we headed with this i don't know where we're heading but things do change humanity change technology change yeah things change and magic correlates magic changes also you know in the, it's not Houdini actually, one of the first magicians that made magic as a theatrical, like prestigious thing, he wore a suit and everything, was Robert Houdin. It's not Houdini, Houdini did escapology. Robert Houdin did, you know, big boxes and doves and then the illusionist, the grand illusions with the sawing a woman in, woman in, in half and uh, whatever. Yeah. This was in the 50s and 60s and 70s. In the 80s, we had Uri Geller, you know, reading minds, think change. And nowadays, people aren't that naive, so they don't want you to read their minds. So think that the story changed. Interesting. And nowadays, it's more like a psychological mentalism. Derek Brown in England, he began yep. all this. Yeah. This, yeah. This thing is about, you know, I influenced you and I read your body language. Right. So things change. You can't say magic is the same because magic isn't nowadays sewing a woman in women in women in half. Right. There are magicians that still do it, but they can't make a living, I guess. Interesting. They're stuck in the eighties. Yeah. And so, what think, what does technology fit into this? Technology do fit into this. Um, with technology, we have new magic tricks. In we have uh, Marco Tempest doing stuff with iPads, and we have very visual stuff, and things do change. And Things change, like you know, like like 15 years ago, we had David Blaine doing magic tricks in the sea, in the street, you know, street magic. Yeah. And he understood people are more interested about their reactions. So David Blaine, what he did, not only the tricks, but instead of putting the camera on the magician, they pivot and they showed the reaction. He did a small trick, and they they had the crowd yelling for one minute. So that was Blaine, and then we had Dynamo and whatever. Nowadays, we have Instagram magicians. No presentations, no nothing. No patience for the, for the no viewers. People just see a trick, five seconds, bam, 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 and it's done. 
Interesting. So I think this is the, the way things change. I don't know whether it's just the technology, but it's the medium. I, like I, nowadays with the Zoom. Yes. So fascinating. Things, things change. Definitely. Itai, I can't believe it. I said 20 minutes are going to go out, away so quickly and they have unbelievable. I, I have to put you on the spot once and I didn't prepare you for this. So I'm sorry in advance, but okay. I want you to tell me three words that you would best describe yourself as, or if I ask anybody watching your show, what would, when I think of a Thai pinky, what are three words that I think of when I think, when I picture a Thai? Wow, okay, actually, three words that I will describe myself are very similar to the three words one seeing my show will describe me. I think I'm bringing myself to the, to yeah. the stage. So when people see me after the show, they feel like they know me, this is good, this is my, my idea. So I would go with, in this order, funny, intelligent, humble. Interesting. I love it. I'm modest. <laughs> Itai, I love it. I can't wait to see another show. I can't believe it's been 11 years since we met when I was just 13 years old. And, and, uh, do the pictures. I'm going to do this and the picture will appear from your bar mitzvah. Boom. <laughs> I love it. With your editing. I love it. Itai, thank you so much. Thank Stay so safe. Much, Miguel. Thanks, Michael. See you soon. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you.